Welcome to The Rational Egoist. I'm your host, Michael Leibowitz. Few topics uh, cause strife between libertarians and between libertarians and objectivists than intellectual property. So I'm an advocate of intellectual property myself, but I wouldn't say a passionate one. It's not an idea that I've thought of very thoroughly throughout the years. So I decided to have an opponent of IP on, and who better than today's guest? He's a prominent libertarian writer, a patent attorney, and someone who's written extensively on the subject, Stephen Kinsella. Stephen, sorry, Stephen Kinsella. Welcome back to the show. Thanks. Well, they may hear my dogs howling because there's an ambulance going by and the dogs howl when that happens, so I apologize for that. But so, Stefan, what exactly is IP? What is intellectual property? Well, that's that's actually a good question. Maybe the right way to start. Um, make sure you can hear me. Um, intellectual property is a class of legal rights um, that have to do with creations of the mind. Okay, you could say it that way. Um, it didn't used to be a coherent legal category. So, like, you could think of the classical law as co covering property rights in physical or tangible or corporeal objects, like your body and the things that you own, like uh, land and uh, and your body. Um, but then there emerged in the last 100 years, 200 years, uh, this category of intellectual property, which was uh, which was invented, in my view, to justify government-granted monopoly privileges, which undercut natural property rights in tangible corporeal objects. Um, and so intellectual property today refers to primarily patent and copyright, but also trademark, trade secret, and other uh, rights that the state classifies under the same umbrella. But patents deal with um, inventions. Like if you come up with, with in your mind with a, a creative way to to use the resources at your disposal to yield a better result, you can claim that as an invention by filing for a patent for it under the U.S. legal system or in, in, in similar systems in other countries. And copyright deals with the um, the legal protection of artistic or creative works of what we call original authorship, um, like movies and novels and uh, software. So basically, IP is a broad term, but it refers to the way the law tries to give legal protection to these intellectual creations of the mind okay in that you mentioned natural property rights and i i think i'm accurate if i'm not tell me but that you like me are an adherent of the idea of natural rights and the tradition of a john locke frederick bastiat or or ayn rand is that correct uh, more or less. I mean, I do think there are some problems with the natural law approach, but uh, their con their conclusions are basically correct. I mean, Hans Hermann Hoppe has sort of a, a different take on it. Uh, you could argue with there is odd gap problem, but basically, yes, we 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 libertarians and we objectivists, I think, agree with a set of natural property rights. Uh, based upon the nature of man and his relationship to reality, and and those right. property rights are basically the rights to uh, acquire and to use resources in the world according to a scheme of property rights that that, that determines who owns which resource, so that we can live in a conflict-free way. Like that's the ultimate um, description of the system that we all favor. I think even objectivists would would agree so far with this description of it i would agree with all but the the, the last part and, I, and i'll tell you why a right as traditionally defined uh in the in the natural right sense because we could get into rights created by government you know the right to due process for instance that's i wouldn't say is a is a 
naturally existing right that's a formulation by a government or a right to trial by jury things of that to, to, by the way I totally agree with that that's something most people miss so there are certain rights that we call civil rights which are only that only arise in the state of a, of a government right so for example yeah there's no right to due process there's no right to be presumed innocent um but those rights emerge as a cautionary sort of limit on the governmental mechanism that enforces rights. Right. So, uh, so we sort of assume or we pretend that there's a prophylactic or a fictional fictional right uh, to due process or to be presumed innocent. Sure. But it's really a disguised limit on the state's powers. That's what it really yeah. is. Ideally, the those types of created rights would be in place to enforce and protect naturally occurring rights. Correct. And the right to vote, by the way, the right to vote is not a natural right. Either, no, right? no. That that's arises just... only in civil society. Right. Right. So a, a right in the, the natural right sense is traditionally defined as a moral claim or, or a just claim to something. It means that the thing is mine by right, by, by the nature of morality, th this thing is mine. That's fair. Now, and I, I, a definition or I don't know a definition, but an explanation that you gave in a, a paper, I believe the paper is called the case against intellectual property, something uh, along those lines. If I messed it up a little bit, I apologize. But you wrote that the purpose of property rights is to allocate scarce resources to permit peaceful, cooperative, productive use of these resources. The first thing that I take issue with is with the purpose of property rights, because purpose implies that there's an intention that somebody is deliberately creating this and property rights i believe exist independently of intent or creation they're they're a natural function of the human right to life okay i hear that but but um and again um uh, from our previous uh discussions your readers might know so i'm a objectivist or a former objectivist so i'm familiar with this way of looking at things but um when you say the so the purpose of property rights so uh the purpose of norm what's the purpose of norms in general right or, or rights and moral truths well if you if you say the purpose of norms because norms can be created right like we can have manners thank you please you're welcome things of that nature that are created for the for a purpose those things are created i w i wouldn't say that they're necessarily moral or immoral but moral truths are not created and this goes into a lot of the the, the stuff that you talk about that but they're discovered right so we we can discover that man has a nature and i say man because it's just too clumsy to have to say men and women every time i'm including the, right. the entire human species right so uh, we have a, a specific nature and we have to ch we have to discover the proper way to live because in prop by proper i mean what's going to further our lives keep us alive and to flourish over the the longest period of time possible we have to discover that those ways of living that we discover that help to facilitate our well-being and longevity are moral truths like in, in one place you refer to them as rules i wouldn't call them rules because they're not like commands that you have to follow it's a choice i want to live i want to i want to achieve my happiness now how do i go about doing it so that's the the sort of base of morality put in layman's terms. Of course, I mean, you know, Ayn Rand puts it rather more sophisticatedly, but I don't want to get into the whole thing because I know that you understand the objectivist ethics and the people listening understand it as well. Yeah, and I don't disagree with anything you said so far. Um, when I say norms or rules, um, there is a distinction between laws and legal rights and between morals, okay? Sure. You, you could say that the the, the latter uh, underpins the, the former, and that's fine, and I agree with that, actually. Um, <clears throat> manners are not... <laughs> the things you should do in your life, the moral things you should do in your life, manners and things like that, are not things that are necessarily rights violations or property rights. Right. Property rights, you could think of as a subset of... Of, of morality uh to be crude about it i don't think that's actually qu quite right but 
that's one way to think about it. Like as human beings, we have to live by our reason, according to a rational code of values that guides us. That's the objectivist mentality and approach, which I roughly agree with. Um, and a core of that is the political subset of like, what interpersonal ethics and norms and laws should we support uh, in furtherance of that? And that is why we believe in private property rights and the non-aggression non principle and things like that, which even Ayn Rand more or less agreed with. Like the non-aggression principle is a, is a, is a, is a, is a stand-in for the political ethics that undergirds her capitalistic political philosophy. Right. So these rights, the, the the natural rights, for lack of a better term, these naturally existing rights, I, I should I think would be a more accurate way to, way to put it. So if I have the right to life, that means the right to protect my life, the right to sustain my life, to take those actions necessary. Okay. For Let, let's stop. For, let's stop life. for a second. So we went. Okay. So okay. first of all, um, I don't I, I mean, I don't want to say that rights exist because that concedes too much, I believe, to your to this to this way of looking at it um because i do believe in a normative and dualistic way of looking at things so we can say that a chair exists and my body exists mm -hmm. but when we say that a right exists that's a complicated way of saying that we think that the proposition that you should or should not do this or this this action is justifiable or not is justified so it's a normative it's a normative and reasoning thing yes. so I, I I I would be – by the way, the same thing applies to more abstract things like numbers. Like, yeah, numbers are a useful concept, but do numbers exist in a platonic realm? I don't think so. I don't think no, I don't exist. either, and I don't exactly. think morality does either. Exactly. So yeah, no. so morality is not – so to, so let's not say that you have a right to this and that right exists like because that's a way of hiding the issue of – or evading the issue of how do we justify that claim that you should or should not be able to do something because that's the that's the that's the ultimate well, issue by by exist right is it means ultimately that i have the right to or i am i have the the right to do something without somebody else using force to prevent me to stop me from from taking yeah i know i know i know but but, but that's so, so what what you what you what that means is that when you make the assertion or the claim that you don't have the right to interfere with my use of this resource in a certain way that that you can't justify the use of force to stop me from doing this. Like it's, it's a complicated thing, but that's really what it means. Right. And I think that ultimately is compatible with Randian style minarchism or libertarianism or rights or whatever. But ultimately I agree with rights are a claim to some resource. Right. Um, but that is a normative claim or rule-based claim. Yes. But that doesn't mean like it, either it exists or it's a human invention. I mean, I, I get what you're I saying. Don't, I don't that, know if I agree with that. What do, well, what do you mean? What, 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 do you what I mean is this. So if what you, exists? what I mean is this, if you see human beings behaving, if you and I are sitting back and we're watching yes. Yes. and we understand the nature of human beings, we understand what human survival requires, we can discover the, the, the moral standard, the actions that that person ought to take. If that person wants to live and prosper, those things are facts there. They don't, they're, they, they don't exist in the sense that I'm discovering them in some other realm or that I, I'm discovering them intrinsically in an object. They that they exist be, because of the relationship between human beings and the external reality in which they live. That's fine. I, I, I mean, I would, I guess, quibble. I wouldn't say they exist. I would just say that well, it's a truth that we can recognize. We can recognize that nature, the nature of man means that there are certain ways humans ought to live if they want to fulfill their potential. I agree yes. with that. Okay. So now if, if property rights are an extension of the right to life, that in this, these are naturally. No, 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 so, so let's back up. So, this okay, is, so you, you would disagree with this. Well, I don't, I don't think there's a right to life. Okay. What? Well, well, how couldn't there be a right to life? Well, because number one is too vague. Well, it, it, I mean, it, you realize it means, that 
what it means. You have to, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a statement and then you have to ultimately define okay. and, and explain what you mean. The right to life simply means that I have the right to, to protect my life and to take the actions necessary to sustain it without violating the rights of other people. I, I, I actually don't agree with that. I don't think that's, va that that's too, that's too vague. And, um, Okay. So, first, so, so give me a second. So first of all, you, you could imagine a welfare statist who would say, well, yeah, we have a right to life. And that means that you have the right to housing and medical care and food. Right. Well, the, well, no, you could, I mean, somebody can obviously say whatever they want, but in order to do that, you would have to violate somebody else's right to life. Exactly. Then that okay, would be okay. in but, but the point is, but the point is, your argument then would turn on what the right to life is. So, like, you sure. think there's a right to life, which is fundamental. But to me, a right is an enforceable claim against a, a, an actual resource. But the life is just a metaphor, or it's like a, a high level concept that describes. I mean, you can't have a right to life because. Okay, what would it mean to have a right to life? It, so it would mean that you don't have. You would agree with me that you don't. That doesn't mean you have a positive claim on the efforts of others to sustain your life, right? No, I, I told you what 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 a right to life right. ultimately means is that I have the the right to protect my life from assault, from attack from others, and I have yeah, the but, right to take but, those but, actions necessary to sustain my own yeah, life. But but, but you but see, everybody the, has this the equal on. right. But you say that your right to life means you have a right to protect your life. But that's sure. just – but what is your life? What do you mean by life? My existence. My existence as a rational human being. So now – As Michael Leibowitz. I'm right Michael to Leibowitz. Life means the right to exist. It, it means the right to take those actions necessary to sustain my existence. Because if oh. you put it in the terms I have the right to exist, well, then that would mean that I, whatever I can – go attack people to exist and i don't I agree. because everybody else has this the equal right as the I agree. nature I agree. Of I, agree. I agree i agree but i'm, I'm getting somewhere with this so so okay. basically rand so rand recognized uh that we are not ghosts right we are material corporeal human beings with with a physical body correct yes she said that we're an integration of mind and matter yes well, yeah, philosophically. We're not, ju we're not just matter. We're not just, we're, we're not a corpse and we're not a ghost. We're an integration totally, of mind and matter. Totally agree. However, the only way that your rights can be violated, and she said this, was by the initiation of physical violence. And physical is a corporeal yes. term. Sure. And that is, but physical violence can only be applied against your body, correct? Uh, not against yes. your soul. No, not against it, your identity. Not it against can your be, not against but your I, no, but it's important to state that if you're initiating force against my body, that, that you could do so in an attempt to get me to stop thinking, to stop speaking, to yes. stop doing. That's why. Totally it, that, that's why totally it's agree. an it's an integration. You're 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 ultimately in, initiating violence against me, not just against a uh, uh, physical body or an abstract mind. It's against me that the violence. I, I, is being I don't agree with that, and I don't. Or I guess I would say I don't care. In other words, okay. Ultimately, what matters is that there's another human being that is using physical force to affect your body without your permission. Well, it might, that's, that's kind of my point is it might not just be to affect my body. If you take my life, for instance, if you kill me, you don't just kill my physical body. You kill me. And, and me entails a thinking entity that has both mind and body. You don't yeah, just kill but, my but, body. Yeah, I agree with that, but that's why yeah. we oppose aggression. We oppose aggression because it could have results that we don't we don't like. In sure, words, and, and let me just say that it's important to to state in this context that yes, the the initiation of force is ultimately the only uh, rights violator, but fraud would also be a, a violation of rights. We, we okay, we could talk about fraud, but the well, point is, you just said force. Force is a physical thing. It can only be sure. applied against physical bodies. I don't I don't I don't I don't disagree with what you're saying about if, if somebody somebody obviously cannot initiate force against my mind absent my body. Or I your don't soul, disagree. Or whatever, you know, or no, your no. personality or your identity. I, I agree with you heartily. All I'm saying is that 
just like that is the case that as long as I'm me, you can't just initiate force against my body either. So you're recognizing one half of it, but not the other half. If you initiate force against me, while it might, the initial contact obviously is with a physical body, but you're affecting me as a person, which includes my mind, my personality, my thinking. It's impossible I, I, not I, to. I, I, I totally agree, but but let, let's let's take another way of looking at it. Um, would you agree that there's a conceptual distinction between the brain and the mind? Uh, I would agree that there's a conceptual distinction, but the mind cannot exist independent of the brain. So I totally, I totally I, 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 when you when you're identifying them, yes, you're identifying two separate. Yeah, facts. one is corporeal, one is abstract. Yes, and sure. the same thing with the identity, the personality, the soul. You might call it the mind. Yeah, of of a human being. My body is distinct from my personality and my personhood. Correct. Uh, your yes, your your body is conceptually a different thing. Yes, correct. Sure. Right, and so when we live among other people, the only way that rights can be violated is by the use of physical force. But physical force can only be wielded against corporeal, physical, tangible objects. So the sure, the, I don't, the I don't, primary, I, don't I, I don't disagree with primary. That. Political and interpersonal prohibition is against the use of force that invades the integrity or uses the body of someone or their other property without their permission. That's well, the see, hold right. on, but that's a key, and that's what I was just going to say, right? Because it's not just if somebody comes onto my my property, I, I'm in my house, and they steal my car. They're not necessarily. I may never even see them, so they have an initiated physical force directly against my body. I I totally agree. But they have. It, it is an indirect use of force in the sense that now the only way I can get it back is that it's oh. implied that they're going to. Use I, I, it. I, okay, okay. Give me a second. I know where you're going with this, and I've thought about this myself. I, I don't agree with that. I think that basically, you're you're trying too hard to stretch the concept of physical invasion and force to cover trust, trespass. I think the better way to do it is just to be honest and say, listen, um, um, I have a, a property right in my body. And if someone uses force against my body, that's aggression. In other words, we're trying to stretch a concept of aggression or, or Rand called the non-initiation non, non of force too far. Um, if someone steps on my lawn or takes my car without my permission, Technically speaking, you're right. It's not an act of aggression because they're not committing trespass against me. But what they're doing is they're using a resource that I own without my permission. That's a type of trespass. But is it a rights violation? Yes. But you just a second ago said that the only rights violation can be if they physically aggress you against your no, body. No, and to I say didn't. the I, other way. I didn't. I didn't. I, I said that's what Ayn Rand and that's what the summary view sort of implies no i don't think that the only way to violate rights is to um i do think the only way to violate rights is to uh invade the borders of a resource that's owned by a person but i do think the person's ownership of his body is distinct from his ownership of other things but he does have ownership of those things so then you would say that a, a right to a, a rights violation would be any trespass against the yes. person or property of somebody else except that i wouldn't use the word property because it's misleading but i would say i would say the owned resource of another person but sure okay uh, well but, but what that, would be the difference between owned resource and property well because the word property uh uh, uh is misleading in this context because the word property properly used means um a property of the person, right? Which is why the word started being used to refer. So in other words, let, let, let me give you an example. You own a car. The average person would say that's your property, right? And so then if you start referring, so I would say the more technical, technically precise way to do it would be to say, you are a person, you own your body, you have certain rights and you own the resources that you acquire by contract or by homesteading and then the question is, who owns the contested things when people have disputes? Like, who owns the car, for example? And if you own the car, if someone takes the car, they're trespassing by using a resource that you own. If you refer to the thing owned as property, 
the better way to say it is uh, you have a property right in the car. Okay. And the reason is because in the IP context, which we might not even get to, but this is fine that we can. But um, in the IP context, uh, people will say, oh, Kinsella thinks that people shouldn't own ideas or information or knowledge. And he says that you don't have a property. So so Kinsella says that uh, 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 that uh, ideas aren't property. Like, that's not my argument at all. OK, it's not about whether ideas are property. When you when you use the word property as a synonym for the for the object of the of the thing that that's a property right to, you confuse everything. So, for example, I would just say in plain terms, I have a property right in my body. I own my body. OK, I have a property right in this car. I own the car. But I wouldn't say the car is my property because that word property is misleading because it can mean, um, let's say, let's say I'm a guy that has a house and a spear and a fishing net. All these things are things that I've acquired, these scarce means of action, these these resources I've mm -hmm. acquired. And they're my property because they kind of a, they extend my reach into the universe. So we call them my property. But they're not my property. Like if I say a car is a red car, one of its properties is its is its color. But, but that's a different. See, that's the problem I'm having, Stefan, is that th that's a word that can mean multiple things. I agree. Right? That's why so, I'm trying but, to. Be but clear. it doesn't. But it doesn't negate the use of the word property in the sense that I say that this microphone is my property, right? Like you take the word sanction. The word sanction can mean both to give per, give give permission, and it can also mean to punish, <laughs> for, for, right? Exactly. But if you're using the word contextually in the you know in the appropriate manner in the appropriate situation, it doesn't negate the meaning of the word. I agree, and that's fine. And I, even in my book, I I use the word because you can't avoid it. I'm just simply saying that there's a danger of of when the IP discussion comes up, people say, Kinsella thinks that ideas aren't property. In other words, they think the discussion is whether X is or is not property. But property just means a property of something. The, the question really is, is X the type of thing that can be owned? And who is the owner? That's really the question. So we need to go to the real question without getting mired in that's that's fine with me. I don't. I mean, I don't because it, to me it means the same thing in in the present context. Is my property and the thing that I own are the same yeah, yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. I, I know this is a lawyer thing. I do sometimes. No, no, it's okay. I mean, yeah, I, I, I listen. Intellectual clarification is vital when when we have these discussions because otherwise people end up debating about two totally separate things. But 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 let me let me give one example why it could matter sometimes. So so let's let's say that you say that well. Um, Kinsella is a, a, a Texas or Louisiana based guy. He's got these books. He's got this characteristic. He's got this age and this history. These are all his properties, right? So he owns his memories. He owns his life. He owns all. The, so like if you bundle all these things into these sort of vague concepts, then you can get output that like people can disagree with. And there's no way to really sort it out. Yeah, and you have to be able to sort things out. I'm, I'm with you on that. All right, go ahead. Okay, so uh, just back to it. So the, the the purpose of property rights. That's the, so. Once you start with that statement, the purpose of property rights. Now, if well, what you're if what you you're say, saying, you can say the nature of property rights too. Like what what property okay. rights are. Yes, and I I would agree with that because when you say the purpose, now if you're talking about the purpose of government laws. No. protecting property rights that that would make sense because now you're talking about legislation human purpose human desire human will so if you say the nature of property rights then you would say it, it means basically uh, uh, when i own something or i have a property right in something it means that i have the right of use and disposal the right to exclude others from it the right to physically defend that thing should somebody else attempt to take it from wait, wait say, say those again cuz i think i agree with the last two but the first one i'm not sure about say again what do you think that a property right of is ownership of a resource means it means ultimately i have the right to use it i have the right to dispose of it Assuming it's a, a physical thing, so I own my mouse. What, what, what does dispose mean? What do you mean? Dispose. By I can throw this away if I want to. I well, can do. I, I don't. I don't. Well, hold on. 
where are you going to throw it away? Like on someone else's property? Well, I, I could throw it in my garbage or I can smash it with a hammer on my own desk. It's mine. I can do no, whatever that's, I okay, want. Right. That's, called a, that's, that's called abuse. So I agree with the, that you have the right to uh, exclude people. I'm it, not sure that you have the right to uh, – I'm not sure if you have the right to – well, go, go ahead. Tell me what so, you're – but, but basically it's just that I, – I, Oh, I can ultimately use force to prevent somebody else from using yes. my property. Right, that's the right of exclusion. I agree with that. Okay, right? so but you don't have, but you don't have the right to use it. That's that's the part I was disagreeing with. I don't have the right to use my property. Correct. Okay, I, I disagree, but I'm going to hold you to that, and I'm going to hold you to it for a reason. I want you to remember that you just said you don't have the right to use your property. Not okay. not by virtue of being the property, the, the right you just be said the, the owner right, by the right to being an owner by right to be right by, to own is the right to exclude. It's not the right to use. Okay. So so for example, if I if I if I own a gun, sure. Do I have the right to use the gun? Well, the, this is the and this is going to get us when we get to the intellectual. I mean, to the intellectual property piece, and this is why it's important to sort this out, right. because yes, you have the right to use the gun. But except, it, but but it but it, but there is no just simply owning something like one of the arguments against IP is that when you have IP you're excluding somebody's right to use their property in the way that they want to. That's but, why I'm being careful. That's why yes, I'm being careful. Yeah, I know but, where you're but, going. That's but I mean. one, you just said you have no right to use, so that's hard for me to see how that could even be an argument against it. But well, secondly, well, well, there's all kinds of restrictions on how I can use my property. I cannot. Not, there's not. There this is. is the point. This so is if where I so if I going. own a bat. Do I have the right to whack you in the head with it simply because no. I own it? The okay, but no. then there's the, but then there's a restriction on the manner in which I can use it. No, the same no, thing you, with the no, gun. No, 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 no. This, this is the. We should stop here because. Okay. This is where. That's why I simply said you don't owning something doesn't give you the right to use it. So you can't just say, "Well, uh, I can't use my bat to kill you." It's like, but I never said that using the bat. No, 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 no. You didn't. What, what I'm no, but you have written. That intellectual property prevents a pro a, a owner of a physical item I from know. using it as he as he says. That's your argument, uh, one of the arguments against intellectual property. Well, well, the problem with intellectual property is that it, it gives a third party the right to to prevent someone from using their property as they see fit. But you just That's said the... you have no right to use your property. So why would that even be a problem? You have so so you have the right to do anything you want as an action in the world, as long as it doesn't use someone else's property without their permission. That's the way to look at it. As long as it doesn't or violate somebody else's rights, which is the same thing. Well, but because attacking a human being, I mean, you could hit somebody in the face and you're then violating their rights. I mean, the, the you know the cliche is I, I have I the, the right for me to swing my hand stops where your face begins. But the, but that's just nonsense because that's not. Stop. I don't have the right to punch you in your face. Yes, you do. Sometimes. I have the right, to, but you you just said, but it, it, just to come up to you and whack you in the face. No, of course, when you're having these discussions, of course, there's a given context. If I'm retaliating from you hitting me, okay. of so course in the, in the context, the reason you don't have the right to hit me in the face is because I own my body and only I have the right to decide who can use my body without my permission. I'm saying the nature of property rights is a right to exclude. It's not a right to use. And the reason I say that is because, yeah, in general, it gives you the right to use it because most uses of my resources are not violations of other people's property. So if I have a home next to you and I shoot off fireworks for a party in my home, I don't have to have a right to shoot fireworks. I just have the right to do whatever I want as long as I'm not violating your property rights. But then that would include if you have the right to do whatever you want, whatever you want necessarily includes the right to shoot fireworks. It's just a All broader right. way to state the same thing. Yes, it is. So you do have a right to shoot the fireworks. The right well, to use it's, something. It's, it's, an, it's, an, it's an implication of, of the way rights work. The way rights work is they're negative and that everyone has the right to. To act as long as they don't 
use the resources of another person without their consent. That's the ultimate issue. Yes. So you, so the proper way to, to put it when you say I have the right to use would be I have the right to use something that I own so long as I don't violate the rights okay, of somebody okay. else. Stop for a second. Stop. Look what you just said. So yeah. it's not the right to use what you own. It's not, it's not an oh, unqualified no, 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 use. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, get, go with me for a second. Yeah. It's not the right to use what you own. It's a right to do anything. So in other words, but that Let's would suppose. include the right to use what I own, Stefan. It's the right to do whatever I want as long as I don't violate the rights of somebody else. If Correct. it's whatever I want, that necessarily includes the whatever necessarily includes to use what I own. And it, but it all, when you're dealing with a rights framework, entails not violating the rights of somebody else. Okay, that's fine. But, but just take this example. Some guy steals a gun from my house. He doesn't own the gun. I still own the gun, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And he Absolutely. shoots someone with it. Okay. Now, the reason he doesn't have the right to shoot the other guy is not because he doesn't own the gun. It's because he doesn't have the own he doesn't own the other guy's body. Well, that's, that, no, I wouldn't agree. I would I would agree with you he doesn't have the right to shoot the other guy's body, but he also doesn't have the right to use your gun. It's not. It's not exclusionary. Yeah, sure. there's, it's there's not just. That, it's not just one thing. He doesn't have the right to possess your gun. He doesn't have the right to carry your gun. He doesn't have the right to use your gun, and he also doesn't have the right to shoot somebody else. Oh, to totally agree. But my point is, if I own a resource, like if I own land, or I own a house, or I sure. own a, a, a rocket, or fireworks, or whatever, mm -hmm. my right to use them is simply a default of the fact that I can do whatever I want to do as an action, as long as I'm not using the resources of another person. So you can't say, well, so, so here's my point. Here's my point. Um, if I own a, if I own my fist in sure. your example of punching someone in the nose, or if I own a gun, yes, I have the right to use it in a general sense, because that's just a way of explaining the fact that no one else has a better claim to that resource and they can't object to me using it but they can object to me using it if i use those means whether i own them or not that's why i brought up the other example so if, if i use a stolen gun or a gun that i own it doesn't matter if i own the resource that i'm using if i use that as part of a means of attacking the property of another person or trespassing without their permission then i'm committing an action that violates in other words what i'm trying to focus on is the essential element of a, an act of crime or trespass that you and I both would condemn is an action, not the improper use of a means or resource. No, it's the violation of somebody else's rights. Correct. By whatever means that you use, sure. whether it's an owned piece of property or whether a stolen property. If I'm violating something, but in the case of the gun, prior to the, the shooter ever shooting at somebody else, he's already violated my rights if he's taken my gun. Correct. But so, 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 but if he doesn't I have, have to fire it, he doesn't have to do anything with it. Once he's taken it from me, he's dispossessed correct, correct. he's violated my right. rights. So let's now get to the, the fundamental issue. So you and I are neighbors and I have, I'm doing a fireworks launch and I have a, a, a rocket that goes up. Everything I'm doing is with, with property that I own, right? Now the rocket goes up and it goes onto my neighbor's property and, and destroys his house. Okay, yes. so now I think we would both agree that I have trespassed and I have uh, used his property without without his permission. Correct? Well, you've destroyed his property without his permission. Yeah. Right. But what I did was an action like the problem with what I did was my action, my okay. use of resources to invade the borders of his property. But yeah. but 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 you would not say that, oh, aha. This is a case that illustrates that property rights are not absolute because Kinsella normally has the right to shoot fireworks off, but he doesn't have the right to shoot fireworks off that destroys his neighbor's property. Mm -hmm. In other words, the fact that you define property rights on my neighbor's property okay, doesn't I, show that my property rights are limited. Not at all. And I, and I think that what, what it, it, partly what is happening in, in this discussion and tell me if I'm wrong, is I think that people have wrongly criticized you in the past. Yes. Misrepresented That's why I wrote a chapter views. in my book. Yeah, I, right. And, and, and a lot of what you're responding to are these uh, 
unjust bad arguments seems. against IP. So so people yeah. will say, oh, Kinsella, you, you say that the problem with IP is that it violates your it restricts your use of your property. But however, property rights aren't unlimited in the first place. But you and did so say that, though. You do say one of the problems is it necessarily restricts the right of somebody to use their property in the way that they want to. That's not your only argument against IP, but you have said it in the case of both copyrights and patents. I know, but but I know, but they're but I'm right about that. Their response is that their response is that oh, Kinsella, you can't be correct that 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 the problem with IP is that it limits your property rights because all property rights limit property rights. Here's my point. They think you're saying, hold, rights... can I ask you a question? Are you saying that it's simply the, the, the correct way to state it in your view would be is that they're unjustly limiting the use of the, somebody else's property? That's one way to put it. The other way is that property rights are limits on actions, not limits on property rights. This is the fundamental thing to understand. So a property right is a limit on action. It's not a limit on property rights. If you have a property right in your house and you have inviolable, absolute property rights in your house, okay? That is not a limit on my property rights. It's a limit on my actions. It's, li it's a limit on what I can do. Sure. I don't disagree. That, that's why I gave the example. Like, if I violate your property rights in your castle, in your house, by sending a rocket over there or shooting a bullet into it, it doesn't matter if I own the bullet or I own the gun. It doesn't matter if I own the resource. It just means that I committed an action that violates your property rights. The whole foundation of everything like this is that – there are the there's the assumption that we have an inviolable absolute property right in our resources, and if if I say that well, uh, you can't you can't commit an action that violates my castle, that just is a demonstration of the inviolability of property rights. You can't use that as an example to say, well, Kinsella, you just admitted that all property rights are. Um, uh, are are, are 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 conditional and so you can't complain that that ip rights violate property rights ip rights are in, are unjust because they violate property rights not because they limit actions this is a fundamental point it's really hard to explain but this is what i'm trying to get at here yeah i i all i'm my only point in bringing the, the that up about there are restrictions on property because if if the, the argument is simply it's a restriction on their right to use their property then that is not a valid argument if it goes beyond that then you then you can elucidate the argument as you're doing and that's that's fine but 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 the, but that's what the argument is because so so in ip i make the arg i make the claim that's the following let me just stitch it out really cl clearly and you okay. tell me where, where you think i'm wrong okay um I think we agree with this. Rand would agree. We, we're, we, we're not ghosts. We have physical corporeal bodies. We need to control our bodies and have physical integrity in our bodies, which is why we agree with laws against murder and rape and that kind of stuff, sure. right? We also need to go into the world, which is a world that initially was unowned, and we need to go and homestead and use resources, right? Okay. These are means of action in Mises' terms. These are scarce resources. And okay. if we want to avoid conflict, then human laws and norms evolve that regulate who can own what. And we roughly agree that basically everyone has a property right in things that they first own or that they acquire by contract. It's very simple. Okay. Do you Would you agree with me that the right to property precedes the legislation? Yes. Okay. So well, I don't. I don't agree. With, I'm. I'm not a minarchist. I don't agree with legislation at, at, all. at all. Okay. So you. I agree you, with law, but not legislation. Okay. Well, well, law is just legislation. I mean, it doesn't have no, to be not. done that's by not. a government. No, it doesn't not. have to be done no, by not. a government body. But no, 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 no. no. Law is not legislation. Legislation is a unique form of law that 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 modern democratic states. Okay. Law I, form, yeah. Law okay. That not. that's not really important for what I'm saying here. I agree. But so. So property rights exist or, or they come into being not as a means to prevent conflict. The reason you create laws protecting property rights, it can be said, 
is to prevent conflict, but that's not why property I rights exist. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I agree with that, but I don't think it matters too much. It's, it it's, does. A, complex, it's a complex thing. It I mean, is it, because I like, you know, you've asked me about this previously and I told you I can't discuss it because I simply don't know enough. But I've spent, you know, uh, the last week and I'm by no means putting myself on par with you who studied this your entire life. You, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not doing that. I wouldn't like there's so many aspects of this discussion that I would simply be unqualified to even delve into. Like you said, I mean, we've only touched on copyrights and patents briefly, but I saw there's also trademarks and trade secrets and y y things that I just don't understand. And, the, you know, does it go for 50 years after the person dies or they only exist during the person's life? All that stuff I'm not qualified to, to delve into. Well, I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you how I think we should proceed, by the way. Let me just tell you how sure. I think we should. So I, I like how you're going at this systematically and, and reasonably. Um, we have to get to the point of what rights are and how rights are created or identified. Yes. And that's here's the, that's, that's, okay. that's the, the fundamental disagreement. Yes. The reason I'm laying this groundwork is because it will, when we get to that point, you'll see that I've already answered half of these objections. Well, that, see, that, and therein lies what, what I was just going to say. Because in my reading, reading of your work and reading the, 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 you know, Wikipedia's definition of IP, the history of IP and all the stuff. And what I'm seeing is the fundamental difference between libertarians who uphold IP and libertarians yeah. who don't. And, and by the way, I'm excluding from this simple utilitarians because I don't, I don't think either one of us is a utilitarian. We're not making economic arguments. So, but the fundamental difference between what traditionally would be called natural rights libertarians or natural rights classical liberals or natural rights proponents, the difference here is in the nature and source of rights. So from my perspective, the the, it, the right to life is the primary right. And I've stated what I meant by that. The right to property emanates from the right to life. The right to life is a, a direct corollary of the objectivist ethics that my life is the standard of ethical value and therefore I must have a moral claim or a right to that which is the source of morality, which is my life. So that means I have the right to take the actions necessary to sustain, maintain, and flourish right. without violating the rights of others. That includes discovering, uh, appropriating, and creating property, right? So from well, there, again, again, you see so, why? Uh, well, I'm no, I, 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 I want to put out my whole position so okay. that then we can actually, you know, delve into it. So therefore, I look at as I'm trying to maintain my life and do what's best for my life, I can put in the time, effort, and I can create something of value, whether it be an invention, a book, whatever. Yeah. So if I'm putting in time, effort. To in it, it, time and effort, and it ultimately results in value creation that is in furtherance of my right to life. I would say I have a right to that property, but you would right. say that that's not actually the source of property. I and that's say, where the almost stands. everything in that chain of reasoning is confused and wrong. Um, because that's why in the beginning I said I don't think there's a right to life because that's not like a coherent. Again, there's no welfare right to life, which I think you agree to. So no, when you say I, right to life, if so, but would you disagree? Just one second. I don't mean to interrupt, but I want to just get clarity. Would you disagree with what I said of what the right to life consists? I, if you call it something else, it's fine. But the right to life means the right to to protect, maintain, and further my existence. So long as I don't violate the equal right of others to do the same, because that's all that's meant by the term. O only if by that you mean the right to uh, defend the bodily integrity of your body. So, so well, you yeah, well, I would see there, and therein lies the problem because the right to life, if I if, to sustain my life, I necessarily have to acquire and use property. So, if I don't have I the, agree. if I don't have the concomitant right to acquire and use property, then the right to life is ultimately meaningless. I agree, but there, I think there is no right to life. I mean, there, there, I don't even know what that means to say. I would say there's a right to the bodily integrity of your body, and there's a right to the exclusive control of resources that you acquire that are unowned or that you acquire by contract. I mean, I would agree with, with that. 
And the all reason- you've done there is combine the right to life and the right to property. Like when people say you have the right to property, that does not mean you have the right to have other people give you property. It doesn't mean you have the right to steal Correct. other people's property. Correct. The right to property is simply shorthand for the right to create, acquire, use, dispose. Not not create. Property. The, the, not cre- this here. Here's where we disagree. Everything you said, I might agree with, but not the word create. We don't create property. We don't create value. And by um, the way, there's no right to value. So that's the other problem with this objectivist way of but looking. I, but at I, I, well, I didn't say there was. But if you, if I create a home, do I not own the home? Assuming I do it with resources that I own, I mean, now if I go and steal somebody else's stuff and build a house, that's a complication. But assuming I own the resources to create a it's home, do I? It's not a complication. If you steal the resources, you don't own the house. That's my point. That, that's if you what build I mean. a house with resources that you own, you own the house. But it, it's not because you created it. It's because you already own the input factors. But how do I come to own the input factors? Homesteading and contract. Okay, well, how do you give me an example of homesteading? You said occupancy, for instance. You but, find a resource in the wilderness that's not owned, and you claim it and you use it, and you appropriate it to yourself. This is Locke in one hundred and one. I mean, this well, is well. Hold on, but Locke talks about ownership in the terms of applying your labor. Yeah, you know, he uses the term mixing your labor with the property. Yes, so, right. but but you say it's that's not the case. You said it's occupancy that matters. No, I never said that. That's someone else. What I said was that Locke made a mistake in saying that the reason you own the things that you occupy is because you owned your labor. I just simply said he made a mistake in his argument. You can take that out and his argument still works. In other words. Okay. No, I'm listening to you. I'm just, I was looking for what, what the phrase I, I, I was, I wanted to find, but so okay, so occupancy. So, so, so the Lockean, and I think the Randian view, and the classical liberal view, and the libertarian view is that we come into the world and we own our bodies because we're self owners, which means we own our bodies, right? You guys call it the right to life or something, but I well, mean, I think that the problem is with the, and this gets back to an earlier discussion that we had, to, that ownership is is not a primary. Right to legitimately morally own something is is a corollary of pre existing concepts, pre existing actions, pre existing rights that ha- that necessarily stems from the the right to life. To to talk about a natural right to ownership a- as opposed to a natural right to life doesn't make any sense. You it's not how do you get to your ownership or your right to property or your right to act absent the the pre existing right to y- your own well. Life. That's you a whole di- that's a whole different discussion about how you justify these rights. I do think that the natural law reasoning, if you make some assumptions, roughly makes sense. Like if we share certain values about life and prosperity and cooperation, and we have certain knowledge about economics and the way the world works and politics, it's pretty obvious that we need to we ought to favor a system of rules. That generate that, that lets us use resources that are, were unowned and that we can acquire by contract and that our bodies are should be prote- protected from trespass. I mean, this is not that complicated, right? Um, there are many ways of getting to the same conclusions, and that shouldn't be surprising because um, I'm know, just I'm have, having I'm having a, a problem with what would be the difference? Why do I own something? that I've discovered and appropriated that hasn't been previously owned by something else, but I don't own something that I've created that wasn't oh, okay. previously owned okay, by something fine. else. Okay. Else. So that, that's the crux of the issue. So in the first case, it's because you have a, you're the first one to start using it and you have a better claim than anyone else. This is how homesteading works for the human race to survive. People have to be able to use things to use things. They have to be the first one to use a thing that was being not being used before. That's what ownership, right? Yeah, I have the right. If no one else owns it, I I mix my labor with it for, you know, lack of a better term, then I own it. Exactly. Because no one else has a better claim because they're not the owner. You're the you're the first owner, the first possessor, the first user. So that's why property rights are based upon possession in the first place. Well, no one can gain. uh, If you deny the right to use resources that are unowned, then the human race would serve. Would, would be snuffed out and we would not be talking about uh, an ethic 
appropriate to human prosperity and human life. No, you would have no. I, I I'm not we, arguing. We have that to favor. Should. We have to favor a system where, if there's an unowned thing, people have the right to use it, and to bring it into ownership. We have to favor that because otherwise we die out. There's just see here. No okay, and I I I absolutely agree with what you just said. You have the right to use it, but you previously said there's no right to use. So well, I don't. Well, well, okay. I mean, uh, when I said that, what I meant was ownership is not the right to use; it's the right to exclude. That's what the right is, as a, in a legal sense. So having but not, but, okay. See, there's the, another problem: is it, we're not talking about in a legal sense. We're okay, talking, right. We're, right. We're talking I, I totally, about I totally agree. Of that. I totally agree. And this is going to be, we're not going to have time. To no, finish. no, we, but listen, it's, it's, it's fine. We, we, I can have you back on. I definitely want, to, do I definitely two, want to continue but, the discussion. So here's a distinction. There is a distinction in the economic concept of use and the legal concept of the right to own something, possession versus ownership. There is a distinction. So in economic terms, um, an actor like Crusoe on its island by himself uh, must use means of action to get things done, including his body, his ability to control his body and other resources at his disposable at his disposal that he possesses. There's no other people, there's no conflict, there's no interpersonal morality. there's no right. right. The whole concept of rights doesn't come into play. In However, such a, such a the scenario. economic concept of possession and control does play there. So when we talk about people using resources in an economic sense, what we mean is they have the ability to use these means to achieve their ends, right? So they 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 have the right to use it. In a, in a legal sense, um, what what you could think of the law as a way of of solidifying or extending possession into ownership. See, I, own I don't, I don't, I, if th that implies that you need law for ownership. And I don't agree with that. No, no, I, it doesn't mean you need, no, it, I, well, I, you, you don't need legislation, but you need law. Of course. Yeah. Well, it, law well, you, is, wait, you really that's what don't. law is. Law, law is. Yes. Look, it, properly speaking law, whether it be in a minarchist or an ANCAP society, the purpose of law is to protect pre-existing rights, rights correct. that already exist prior well, to the enactment of that law. And if I have the right to ownership or I have the right to the, the property, that I, I don't, 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 I don't know if they pre-exist or not. But but the point is that a, a, if a they legal, don't, Stefan, if they don't, then law can't violate rights. But that's why I said earlier when you say rights exist, I, they don't exist in the same way that facts exist. So so can law violate rights? The legal system can have unjust legal rules. Yes, but can can a law violate rights? Only actions can violate rights. But but a law a law necessitates action. So if I outlaw something, then I'm saying that the state or the ANCAP protective agency or anybody else can go and use force to prevent an action from taking place. Can the law or or the law's agents? Yes. violate rights okay but then yeah. the rights have to pre-exist law that's fine okay that's okay so you said you had to go and i don't want to i think it's a good place to stop i definitely want to have you back to continue the discussion but you see where we're going so we so we're, sure. we're kind of getting to the point of the core of rights and then ip is just on top of this like the, the core issue is uh, before we get so the, the fundamental mistake I believe that the Randians make is is what you said earlier. You you inserted the word creation. Yes. And the reason is because you think of in terms of the purpose of nor of morality and political ethics as coming up with a system that promotes human life, and that includes the ability of humans to act and to pursue their values, and. That way of looking at it assumes that values are things that we create and things that can be owned and pursued and protected by law. And that leads to the IP idea. That's okay. the fundamental mistake, I believe. And it, it comes from the mistake. And this is why I said that earlier, property rights come from um, and things outside of ourselves. They come from two acts, homesteading, unowned resources, which Rand agrees with, by the way, and 
con contract, like acquiring something by contract. But when you say also creation, you're inserting a third thing. But the reason is because the example you gave was building a cabin or something like that, but that's already with your own resources. There's no new property created that you have a property right to. Okay. So uh, let me ask you a quick question before you go. All right. If somebody were to come with a, a, a wind blower, let's say, and blow down my cabin, leaving all the pre-existing resources intact, have they not violated my property? They have, have they not? They've destroyed they have, my creation. They, they have. They they have committed an act of trespass against the physical integrity of your of your resources. But they you. haven't. The, the the resources are still there. The only thing that integrity has been violated is the cabin. Well, they, they they've invaded the borders of my property by rearranging what what was there. Yes, they have. It's it's like if if I if I yeah if if I if if you have a painting and I take the painting and rip it to shreds. Um, you still have the pieces of paper, the scraps of paper, or the paint and the pigment, but but, but I don't have the less creation. You. It's, yeah. yeah, they have oh. created disorder and they violated your property rights. I, I believe so, but okay. it's not it's not because you have a property right in the creation. It's because you have a property right in the physical integrity of the resource that you own. This is the whole point of property rights. Is it's it's a it's a property right in the physical integrity. But I That's own the house, right? I own the cabin. Well, you own. That's why I said property rights are a right to exclude. By owning a cabin, it means that you have the right to prevent other people from affecting the physical integrity okay. of that thing. Just like if you own your body, if you're a woman and you have a, you own your body, you have the right to tell a man no for sex. Like you have the right to exclude. That's the essence of property rights is the right to exclude, and that extends to your cabin or okay. things like that. And when people use physical force to invade that, that's where there's an act of trespass. But none of that implies that there's a property right in the value of things or that you acquire property. By I, I never said you had a property right in the value, but, uh, this but is, here's the two but, points that we're going to pick up next time, just in case. We can I, pick up that one. And I the other one is, yeah. Creation yeah. and whether property rights, if the fundamental property rights Correct. is the right to exclude. Stefan, thank you so much. It's always a, a, a pleasure to have you. You are a, a true gentleman in, in the way that you conduct yourself when you disagree. Uh, and I really appreciate it. Do you, All right, do let's, you, do part two, let's do part two later. I'd love to. We will. Thank you so much. For now, this is The Rational Egoist signing out. I'm Michael Leibowitz. Till next time.